Okay, it's another edition of This Week in Penn State Football. And we're going to talk about what is next on the agenda for James Franklin and his Penn State program. The Penn State Blitz podcast moves on. Greg Pickle in the studio with Bob Flounders. I'm Bob. Greg's going to be heard from very shortly. Greg Pickle, what, what's next for Penn State's uh, program? What's next on the calendar? Do we have to be worried about the transfer portal? Mm-hmm. Do we have to be worried about an offensive line coaching hire? I know there's another signing day coming up. What's next yeah. for Penn State? So I believe right now the players are all home because the winter semester does not start at Penn State till I believe, January 13th. So they'll come back to campus then. So if we don't start to hear about transfer portal entries by that point in time, I think you'll begin hearing about yeah. them that week because, you know, obviously guys who are going to leave aren't going to spend all – well, I guess they – in theory they could spend all spring on campus and then leave after, you know, after spring practice in the semester We know somebody ends, who did that used to play quarterback We do, State. We're yes. not going to mention any names. No, we're not. But his initials were TS. Yeah, he led the greatest overcashing drive in, I think, bowl season history back in uh, – back on whatever day we got back from <laughs> Dallas that Monday. So anyway – um, yeah, I look at it like this. The next real th- calendar thing to watch is the AFCA Coaches Convention in Nashville is January 12th mm-hmm. through 14th. We've heard a lot about how James Franklin uses that as a place to interview coaches and get a read on future candidates for when he has job openings. So that's always interesting to follow and see maybe who he's catching up with down there. Uh, January, uh, like I said, the 13th then is – or the 14th, I'm sorry, is when classes start for the winter semester. So that will give us some transfer portal uh, mm-hmm. insight. You know, with the offensive line coaching hire, Bob, is there really any rush? I don't think that there is. So there's no doubt to me that he knows who he wants. It's just a matter of how long it'll take to put all the chess pieces in place. So, um, yeah, I think that'll be done probably in two weeks' time. That make it sound about right. And then January 20th is a deadline to declare early for the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. And the first Wednesday in February is National Signing Day. And I believe the Senior Bowl and the NFL PA Bowl and some of that stuff will happen in between too. Yeah, I think that James knew who his next offensive line coach was going to be before – he probably let Matt know that he was going to not retain him. Right. I wonder if the OC. You think he OC. told him before? <clears throat> Matt Limegrover to me did not seem like a guy after the Cotton Bowl by it. Yeah, surprised by it. who saw this coming. But I think I think James knew who he was going to Oh, certainly. I knew who, yeah. And I think the, the, the guy is already all but on board. We're just waiting for the right time. Because we don't really know how long – it had been since he had he had kind of agreed with Kirk right. Trocker to be the next offensive coordinator. It just kind of came out, you know, uh, what was it, the Thursday before the bowl yep. game? Yeah. So we'll see. What about on the player front? If you had to pick one or two guys that most likely to <laughs> enter the transfer portal for the fan base to kind of be nervous about, is there is there anyone that you think might jump? You know, again, we've talked about it before, but any veteran receiver that's still on the roster is going to have to take a long and hard look yeah. at Who's coming into this program? What's there? I mean, it's, it won't mm. surprise anyone if one of the running backs would jump into that portal. But right. I don't know. You spent some time with him in Dallas. I did too. I just don't get the sense any of those guys are leaving. I, I really don't. Uh, and then maybe an older corner or two that hasn't played much. Maybe one of those guys looks to move on. Someone's going to have to leave. I mean, they were they were well get over. Out. I mean, they were, they, were, they were well over eighty-five scholarships, yeah. Bob. Back when they signed 27 players in the class of 2020. And since, <clears throat> uh, Itor Grossmatos and KJ Ham are the only two guys that left early that weren't out of eligibility. So I think they'll have to have some guys move on, some shape or form. Uh, but yeah, I think that January 14th date's a key one to know. And other than that, at some point in 2020, Sandy Barber claims we'll see the basic terms of James Franklin's <laughs> contract. She said early. Doubtful. In 2020. Doubtful. I don't know what they define as early. I will bet that they're out before spring practice. I will guarantee you it won't be much long before spring practice. Uh, before we wrap it up, what's next for Micah Parsons? Are, we, are you and I, are we ready for what this next? The year of Micah. <laughs> the year of Micah is going to be like in terms of the attention because it was a crazy final 30 days really of the calendar mm-hmm. year for him with the All-American uh, honors that he got. Consensus yep. All-American. He's on the Penn State wall. Dominates the Cotton Bowl. Um you know, it sure sure looks like he has a if he stays healthy a a lock to be a first round pick. Yep, uh, a young player who should only get better. 
Um, is he is he worthy of Heisman Trophy consideration? Is he going to win the Butkus? Is he going to be an All American again? What is the linebacker room going to look like with him, Brandon Smith, and Lance Dixon seeing significant snaps? Do you think we can really appreciate how crazy it's going to be for Micah this year? Not yet, but give it a few weeks, and uh, once we get through the early portion of the draft uh, prep and everything else, I mean, this is a guy that is going to be on every preseason awards watch list. He's going to be on every All American team that's published anywhere in the world between now and August. Uh, he's going to definitely, I think, as long as his play continues the way it has and there's no injuries, be yeah. a finalist for every defensive award in the <laughs> country. And, Bob, if he plays, you know, if he plays 12 games like he played the Cotton Bowl, he won't win the Heisman Trophy. But he could certainly end up – I mean, it's just so hard for a defensive guy to win it. But he could certainly end up on stage in New York. Yeah. I could see that. And, and if James Franklin ever decides to let him return kicks or run the ball, maybe that would help his chances. Well, I can tell you we're going to be saving this uh, this podcast, this well, video, because if he wins the Heisman, <laughs> you might as well just leave the state. You might as well just get out now, because yep. that's a bold prediction early in January. You're probably right, but I think there's a chance. I'm saying there's like a little bit of a chance. He's well, that good. Well, I blew Minnesota, so hopefully I don't blow this prediction like I did it's that fun. One. It's really fun to watch him develop. It's, it's great that he was... He's from the Harrisburg area, and he's just a fascinating player, just charismatic. You see him in interviews, uh, very captivating, great sense of humor, yep. uh, sense for, you know, the bigger the game, the better he plays. Mm-hmm. And, and just to hear people talk about him, it's kind of neat. I don't know. I, I could see him sweeping a lot of awards, a lot of defensive player awards if he stays healthy, because I don't think we I really don't think we've seen his best football yet. No, I don't either, Bob. And it's only uh, he can only go up from here.